It just said it. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. First Baptist Church of Suitland Sunday School. Sister Galloway. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Galloway. Good morning. <clears throat> For those of you that are on virtual free conferencing and on your phones, uh, our scripture today is Jeremiah 42, 7 through 22. Uh, before we get started, we will have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much this morning for your abounding grace and mercy. We thank you for the breath of life for touching us this morning, allowing us to wake up and get here. We pray this morning that you will give us the desire for more of your word. As we go through our trustworthy lesson this morning, help us to take this lesson, hide it away in our and apply it as we go week. These and every other blessing we ask is always in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We're coming in right now, but we're going to get started. For those of you that have books, you're on page 100. Our tagline to our lesson this morning is God's people must never trust their own understanding over God's command. And we know that to be true as believers. If you have uh, a phone, uh, you can use the phone for your scripture. I say that because we went from chapter 36 to chapter 42. There's five chapters in between. If you don't have time to read it, you use your phone for Google and everything else. Pull the scripture up and listen to it so you can get the full context of the lesson. Yes. Okay. For those of you on virtual that are not speaking, please put your phones on mute and your computers so we don't get a lot of feedback. Okay, let's move on. We're on page 100. There's a, a paragraph, as usual, at the bottom of the page. It says, most of us visit a doctor when we want medical advice. We consult a professional regarding our health, regarding our health issues to receive an accurate diagnosis and a plan for recovery. Sadly, many people today do not consult God's word to guide them as they make important life decisions. They say they believe the Bible is the Word of God, but their decisions don't reflect what they say. Well, we know if you you love God, you love His Word. And many of us do exactly what the reading we just said. Is we, we know what to do, but we always want to help God out. <laughs> When he's taking too long, we get that fleshly anxiety, and what do we do? We get anxious, and the words say that we should be anxious for nothing. And all we want your to ways acknowledge him. That him. Amen. All your ways acknowledge him. But I want to start off with two words before we get to this. Well, a little question at the bottom of the page on 100. Let's take that. What do we think causes a disconnect between people's verbal affirmation of the Bible as God's word and their failure to follow God's command? What do we think 
would cause that in a person. And, a, and not just in a person, but more over in a believer, somebody that says that they believe in God, and then they go and ask for his wisdom, and then they don't act positively on what he told them to do. I'm not sure we always go and ask for the We yeah. just kind of do our own thing before we see God. I think, I don't know. Well, I'm a couple of steps ahead. I'm mean, a couple of steps ahead. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think, go ahead, Michelle. We, we need you to sit at this table, though, so people can hear you. Besides what they see, you know, they gravitate towards what they see and then from what they hear. I guess what they see is more, um, um, you want to go towards that way. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, uh, yeah, go ahead. Somebody, I just wanted to add, you, you, one of the things you already said, we, we get anxious and we want to help God out. And as the sister said, it's rooted in fear. You know, our fear of the unknown and God's ability to, yeah. uh, that, that, you know, that God is not able to hold a future. Or control our destiny. Yeah, that, that's a good point. And that, that's what we're talking about here. I think we say we uh, we love the Lord and we love his word, but I think our daily action says just the opposite. We start off with our word first, and then if that doesn't work for us, we call then, we, then we call on him. Mm-hmm. Usually that's how it works. Yes, that's so true. Now, and that used to be me too. I used to do the same thing. Well, I'm not sure. I don't still do it. Yeah. <laughs> no. There are cases in my life I, I go into my own thing and then I realize right. I'm talking to the Lord. But now since I study the Word so often, then I haven't always studied the Word consistently, but I do now. And, and that gives me the consciousness. You see, I'm conscious of what I'm doing now. A lot of times in the past, I wasn't conscious of what I was doing. And you're teaching it. Right. That movement, that action for me was always stuffed away in my subconscious. So it was automatic to lean to Ed's understanding first, right? Because <laughs> of course I lean to my own understanding first, and then when I get in trouble, God, I need you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, as someone already said, it should have been the other way around. Right? Okay, there's two words I want to address today before we get started. One is decision as we had in this first part. Uh, when, when we talk about choices and decisions, they are with every one of us. From the time we get up in the morning, uh, what color socks we're going to put on, what are we eating for breakfast. Some of these choices and decisions are based. And they are coming from the subconscious. They're just automatic. You get up in the morning, breakfast. You can make my coffee. Coffee, yeah. Uh, clothing. What am I going to wear today? Uh, uh, color my hair. All these things are autopilot most of the time. But there are these other decisions and choices in life. Um, our entire life. And when I think about decisions, I think about the decision that none of us look at probably until it's time and not death. I always think about that. That's a choice. Dying is a choice. Death is inevitable. Death is inevitable. You're going to leave. If you came, you're leaving through death, right? Right. So we don't have to worry about death. 
it's going to come when it comes. So that's right. But dying, on the other hand, gives us a choice. You know, if you don't make a choice before you leave here on where you're going after you leave here, okay. then you have already made a choice. And many people say, I didn't make a choice. Well, you made a choice. You didn't follow God's <laughs> words. <laughs> That's right. If you didn't make a choice, you in fact made a choice. So that's the piece that we have some control over is the dying part. The second word I want to talk about is remnant. That's in our lesson today. My first knowledge of what a remnant was, what remnant was, was going to the, the sewing store with my mother. She, she was uh, someone that made her own clothes. And I wound up making my own clothes after a while, hanging around her. So that was a way to save money where we came from. And we were always trying to save money. And I used to go to the sewing store with her. And they had these big bolts of cloth. And uh, she would have the pattern cut from the uh, cloth cut off and take it home, use the pattern to make the clothes. But when the cloth got so uh, low, they couldn't cut any more cloth off of it, whole cloth, then they used it as what was known as a remnant, uh, which was something that was left over from the whole. And that was my first knowledge of what the word remnant was. And I wrote down here um, that a remnant Defined as a small surviving group of people, which is also sometimes defined as something left over. Uh, at other times, it's defined as a leftover piece of fabric remaining after the rest has been used up or sold. And that was my first. Not as what remnant was. But in God's view, He has always left the remnant through uh, Isaiah, Elijah. In fact, with Elijah, He said that He had left 7,000 that would honor Him, praise Him. However, Elijah thought everybody was not. Sure did. But God filled it in. He told us, nope, everybody's like, oh, I'm going to always leave a remnant. And we'll see in our lesson today, guess what? It leaves a remnant. Uh, those were two words I thought that need to be clarified before we move on with the lesson, because they're going to pop up very, very frequently. This thing of choices and decisions, it's going to be there for Jeremiah, and it's also going to be there for the remnant. They're going to have to make a choice, too. And if you read your lesson, you know what that choice is, right, Ms. Brown? <laughs> <laughs> you know what that choice, choice is. It's the wrong one. Okay. So with that, we're going to go to page uh, 101 here. And like I said about the phone, if you didn't get through these five chapters leading up to 42, and it's a lot of reading, and it's a lot of activity going on in there, too. So use your phone. The phone will read the scripture to you verbatim. Verbatim. From any, from the King James Version, right down the line. And I be, but it's a good way to stay within context, right? You you know what happened before, the Paul Harvey version, I call it, what happened before the rest of the story. You know it. Because you went through all five chapters that brought you up to 42. With this book, 
it probably would be impossible to do every chapter in Jeremiah because chapters, Jeremiah is 52 chapters. We would be here until Christmas trying to get through this book. Okay? Jeremiah for a year. For a year. That's right. That's right. Exactly. So, to, today we're in chapter 42, and we, we will get to our reading in a second, but on page 101, it takes us through 40. Uh, chapter 40, 1 uh, through 45 and 5. The first paragraph on page 101 tells us that when Jeremiah was found do, um, in chains by the uh, by the Babylonian uh, a captain of the guard, a guy by the name of Nebu Surrender. And he told Jeremiah that, that he had a choice. That he didn't have to go to Babylon with the rest of the captains. That King Nebuchadnezzar had given him instruction to allow Jeremiah to go wherever he wanted to go. Now we don't know why this was. Maybe he gained favor through the prophecies that he that were true. Right? And he may have thought that he had a lot of courage for going through all of this. And nobody really knows what he was what his purpose was for allowing Jeremiah to make his own choice in this situation. But if we read at the top, the last um, the last sentence, it says, Nebuchadnezzar recognized that Jeremiah was the Lord's prophet and demonstrated more respect for Jeremiah and the prophecies than Jeremiah's own people had done. Now, that says something. That speaks volumes for God's word. Then in every one of these lessons, what do we hear? This is the word of the Lord. The God of armies. The God of Israel. So keep in mind, none of these words were Jeremiah's words. Okay. This was the word of the Lord. But at, at that point, what Jeremiah did, he chose to go to um, to Mitzvah, which was very close. If you want to get an idea of how close these places were, go to the map in the back of your book when you get a chance. And all of these locations that it's that's spoken of in Jeremiah are listed on this little map in the back of your uh, Sunday school book. And some of you may have been to that part of the world and you may have been to some of these places. I don't know. But, but I think I can safely say I have never, ever been to any of these places. Neither. Without even looking at them. No, I have not. But he chose to go to Mitzvah where um, a guy by the name of Gedaliah had been, been put in place, appointed to govern Judah by Nebuchadnezzar, okay, which was the guy that was doing the deporting. He was the king of, uh, of battle at the time. And so he put this guy in place. And that's where uh, that's where Jeremiah wound up. How however the second paragraph says shortly after he got there there was a an assassin came from Ammon and killed Dead Elias. Okay, at that point, this this guy was an Israelite, who was a uh, was not an Israelite, but an Ishmaelite. <laughs> 
and he was the descendant of uh, the firstborn son of Abraham, which was not the son that God told him to wait for. That son was through, uh, through a handmaiden of his wife. She recommended that. But sorry, sorry. I hear a phone. It was me. I'm sorry. <laughs> a ringing phone. The thing never rings, but it is today. <laughs> It's always a sense of urgency when you hear me. <laughs> okay. So we we see that Lot get Elias got killed by this assassin, and this guy was taking the whenever there was a vacuum in a place, and there was a vacuum at this time with this deportation. Whenever there's a vacuum, the bad guys want to take over. They come in, they want to take all the captives, all the food, all the women, and this, and this guy was no different. And his name was Ishmael. He was an Ishmaelite from the tribe of Ishmael. And he wound up getting killed because the, the leader, Jonathan, I'm sorry, Johanan, from Judah, which was the military guy there, wound up finding where they were and he overtook them and took the captives back to Judah. Okay, so once they got back to Judah, everybody's talking about, uh, well, we may, we, we could stay here, but if we stay here, maybe Nebuchadnezzar will send his men back here to kill everybody here because this guy killed get alive, somebody that he had put in place over here. So that wasn't an issue. That was a conundrum right there. They were rolling over their minds. So they started out for Egypt, but in the process they thought it would be more prudent to ask Jeremiah to pray to his God to get the truth and when they got the truth, they actually said that they would obey it. They would act positively on whatever decision God brought back, they would do it. And that's why I left the stars today. Uh, if we go over to explore the text on page 102, And I have a volunteer to read, explore the text, option one, Jeremiah 42, 7 through 12. Anybody want to read that? Okay, I got it. Oh, okay, go ahead. I just didn't hear anything. Oh, okay, okay, one. <laughs> At the end of ten days, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, and someone to Hanan, son of Kareem, all the commanders of the armies who were here, and all the people from the least to the greatest. He said to them, It is what the Lord said, The God of Israel, to whom you sent me, will bring your petition before him. If you will indeed stay in this land, then I will reveal it. And not demolish you. I will grant and not uproot you, because I remain concerned with the disaster that I have brought on you. Don't be afraid of the king of battle, whom you now fear. Don't be afraid of him. This is the Lord's declaration. Because I am with you to save you and rescue you from this, I will grant you compassion, and he will have compassion with you. Amen. All right, and may God add a blessing to the reading of His Word. We we see here that they asked Jeremiah to go and pray to His God. So at the end of ten days, He comes back. Okay. We notice here. Sentence 1, verse 1 through 
verse 7. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. It's God's word, not Jeremiah's word. This is what the Lord says. It's the Lord's word. Right. Okay. Just want to make this clear because we're going to be asked about this later in our Bible series. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Lord's declaration. The last. Okay, so what we have here is a choice. And he brings them back to choice. Then he says that he will build them up, he won't tear them down. Now they're hearing all of this. Now they just saw all of the prophecies of Jeremiah come true. They've been deported for the third time. All of this has happened. Okay? Now, the choice can only be we're going to obey God at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the only choice. It's because of the what? Evidence, right? All the evidence, all the prophecies of Jeremiah have come true. So the man was alive, right? Okay, so now we're at another choice point, another decision point. So, If we go over to, let's go to that was option one. So let's go over to Bible skills here on the next page. We this uh, well, I better ask this question. Did anybody have anything to say on option one? And that was what Stephen on a job had just read. It. Nope. Yeah, I've been doing it, and I just did it. Oh, the last thing. Uh, which is, grasp before the most man, I trust that I don't understand. Who I go to. Yes. So, the only question is, who I go to. I thought of it. That's right. right. <laughs> that's okay. right. That's the big thing. Right. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That, that's the tagline for today. I mentioned that tagline when we got started with trustworthy because God is always trustworthy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The only trustworthiness we have is through His Son, and we hanging on this coattail, right? Right. That's all we got. That's all we got. But God is always trustworthy. Thank you for that. I had mentioned that when people were coming in, okay. and, but I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you brought it back because that word trustworthy, uh, I think we had worthy the week before last, didn't we? Because I think worthy was the last week before yeah. Yeah. This week is trustworthy. And as the deacon says, God's people must never trust our understanding over God's commands because, yeah. because his word is true. I think that is the disconnect, uh, that question on page 100. Mm -hmm. That oh, yeah. is what the disconnect is. That's Whatever right. you believe and trust, you right. will walk in. That's right. If you don't trust it, and that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Many times we say it about Master then when it comes to, like the example of Absolutely. the little boy, yeah. he's watching them roll the man across <laughs> a, a tight rope in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> right. And uh, they asked him, do you believe he'll make it to the other side? Oh, yeah, yeah, I believe he'll make it to the other side. Okay. Yeah. Okay, why don't you get in? But that's what you said with his what? Wow. Wow. That's what you said with his lips. Yeah. And that, my friend, is the difference between belief and trust. Anybody can say they believe. Yeah. It's easy. Right? But the easiest thing in the world to do is quit. It don't take any effort to quit. Right. <laughs> I also made a connection because 
in the introduction makes a point of saying that Jeremiah has garnered the faith, the, the trust of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar mm-hmm. that he understood that right. he was a prophet from God. The Bible right. right. already saying that in the motion. That's right. They may not have known that, yeah. but God has set it into motion, and that's why he could say to them, don't worry. That's right. your, I've got your protection in hand. I've taken care of it. He's, he's going to be merciful. He's going to leave you alone. That's right. So long as Jeremiah is there, because right. Jeremiah will be your spokesman. They may not have known that, but God already had that in the motion. Right. And we may not know that in our own lives, but when you see that, that's why God put it in the scripture like this, so we would know, even though you don't know what God, what plans God has made, yeah. that's why he's in control, because he already knew what was going to happen, and he's already put things into place, Amen. so that you will be protected, stay where you are. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, I think this was also a difficult decision for them, though, I think. Yeah. Be- because of the like eyes. Like you said, what you see. Because of the eyes. Because you think about this, okay? You had a siege going on for, what, 18 months? I don't know what the conditions inside the compound were. Dead body. Nobody there, no problem. Garbage has built up for 18 months. If, if garbage still up in your house three days, you got a problem. Yeah. Okay. You got a problem. All of this has happened. And then on the last speech, I'm sure they killed more people. They are there. Somebody's got to bury them. They say if they go back to Egypt, they're going to have it at least easier than this. Yeah. But you know what? It's one thing that I found out. When you don't know what God is doing and things don't look right, go with the book. God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. When things don't look like they... To your understanding, right? To your flesh and understanding, if you don't understand it, go with it. Probably God talking to you. Because if you're making the choices and you can see every road, every nook, every cranny, every angle, that's right. When you get to the end, and you know what you're going to do? God, I need you. <laughs> because there's something down there that's going to be destructive. And you know who set that in motion? You did. Because you made the initial decision, he didn't make. Okay? So, thank you for that, Charlene. I like that. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're over now on the Bible skills. And Bible skills, let's see what this is. Uh, it says, notice repeated words and it's all phrases in a Bible passage. Read Jeremiah 42, 7 through 22 slowly and reflectively. As you read, note the number of times the text emphasizes Jeremiah spoke God's <coughs> message. And we have done that. Uh, not his own message. Example, this is what the Lord said, or the declaration of the Lord. Notice also how Jeremiah's passion seems to escalate through the passage as he tried to dissuade the people uh, from rejecting God's directive. Read the passage aloud. And that's what we're doing. Uh, uh, Read the passage aloud. Again, emphasizing these repeated words and the prophet's passion. So, we'll see more of those uh, phrases as we move along. But if we go over to page uh, 104, there's a big blue print for those of you that have books in the center. 
well, not really the center, uh, about uh, one, one third of the way down the page on, on the right side, it says, what greater assurance did they need than the assurance of God's presence with them? That's what you just said, Charlie. And they put that in big, big blue uh, print for a reason. Uh, and I, I, I think that's one thing like that we can stick a pin in because how many times do we know who's talking? You get in a situation and you, you're not in tune with this because you haven't practiced fine of it in 10 years, right? So, so you really don't know who's talking. And Satan can look just like <laughs> the good stuff sometimes, right? And sound, say stuff the tip of your ears, right? And once he's in, you in. Now you're into the situation. And Satan always is going to take two steps back and say, you got it. <laughs> He's never going to be with you when you need him. But this says, what greater assurance did they need than the assurance of God's presence with him? That's what he told them. Didn't he tell them that? I will be with you. Now, they're ignoring all this stuff, but this is just going into the subconscious, right? It's just it's going into the subconscious. Where do they go when they leave that beacon? Egypt. It ain't going back. Because what they see with the eye seems to be more overwhelming than God's message. Now, I can't say that. I might not have done the same thing. You're sinking in there. The temple's been burned down to the ground. So what's left? And God is saying, I uh-uh, stay right here. So what would you have done, Charlie? So <laughs> 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 you don't know. <laughs> that would be tough. That's why I admire yeah, that would be the tough. president in Ukraine yeah. when our president said, well, if you want, I'll get you out here to take it to whatever country you want to go in. Right. And he was like, no, I'm just going to be real yeah. right uh, here. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'm just standing yeah. firm. I'm holding the line alongside my people. That's and he does. That's he right. just needs right. yeah. to be holding the line alongside his people. Yeah. Most yeah. presidents would have been at it. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah. even yeah. know where the word it would be gone. Two, speaking of... Uh, Since that happened, 
seemed to me that this would be an automatic. This would be a no-brainer, right? No, we're staying. Nope. It's okay. If there's a question right beneath that blueprint that says, it kind of still calls a person to question their beliefs and confidence in God. Why, uh, why can God be trusted in the middle of difficult situations? Okay, where else can you go? Where else can you go? Right. <laughs> I always think about the fact that God knows the past, present, and future all at once. I don't. That's right. <laughs> so I have to say right. He knows things about the situation I don't know. Yeah. How does fear cause a person to question their belief and confidence? Fear can uh, cause one to forget God's past help and his promise. <laughs> And fear can also cause people, they, if I blame you for something that happened, I will have compensation. I will have strife and might. But sometimes fear will cause people to blame God in the midst of that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and instead of mind blaming you or mm-hmm. blaming myself. Right. So uh, we can trust God in the middle of a difficult situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I looked up Hebrews 10, 23, mm-hmm. it says, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith, for he is faithful that promise. Amen. That promise us. Amen. Uh, and he will not, he will not go back on his word. Mm-hmm. And in a difficult situation, as we trust God, we will have peace right. within us. And then we will have patience to wait on him. Amen. Amen. I, I, I do think the start of that, but I think we do think that we have to, <laughs> that we have to be on God's side for this to happen. Because you recognize that what we were just talking about, the things that we put in motion, okay? We put those things in motion. So there's going to be consequence for those things. Mm-hmm. Now, if he puts things in motion, right? Now we can blame him, okay? But I, you, I'd like to add something. He puts things in motion. going to turn out. That's right. It's going to turn out all right. But those things that we all right, we got somebody virtually that oh. want to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, I think all the points that have been made are, are excellent ones. I, I just remember somebody doing an acrostic of fear. And it was, you know, they said F stands for false, E, evidence, A, appearing, R, real. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I think of what what is fear? You know, and, you know, you said that anxiousness or just you know, the belief that there will be false, you know, the outcome will not be favorable if I trust God. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the outcome is not going to be favorable because God is not trustworthy. For, you know, I don't believe God is trustworthy. Mm-hmm. But... um you know, because I don't remember everything that he's done. I don't. I don't know the history, his track record. Right, right, and that then that is the issue. You know, if you don't know the evidence, which does not apply here, these people have seen more than enough evidence. Okay, I mean, all they got to do is look around them. There's plenty of evidence of the prophecies coming true. But because you are not in God, right, then you can't see that. You're looking with these. But then that same thing happens with each and every one of us every day to some degree, okay? 
the Navy uh, catching a yellow. You know, you know you, you know you shouldn't do it, but hmm, I think I can take it. And then when an accident happened, God, why me? No, God I didn't put that in place. You did. <laughs> You put that in place. You knew you should have stopped, right? You did. You you put it in place. And many times we do the same thing. And that's what these people are doing. But these people got more than enough evidence yeah. to make the right choice. Yeah. More than enough. So I, I was just on the line. For me, yesterday, I was not certain minded. I was using the real bread. Uh huh. It says, forever faithful God. God. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, so in Psalm 73, 4, right. the Lord of the Lord is right. Right. So he is faithful in all that he does. That's right. You know, so right. the both of them just right. I was trying to do my lesson. Uh -huh. And I was saved by That's right. right. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. 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 He's faithful. He's whatever. Yeah. I, I, I think if we try to remember, which is tough if you're not... Not a fighter, okay? It's tough if you're not a fighter because I think we need to remember in Matthew, Jesus talks about be ye perfect as your Father in heaven. So that, that means that God is faithful yesterday, today, and forever. If we can try to be faithful every day to what we know here, then we are seeking that perfection, and really it doesn't mean perfection, it's, it's holiness is what we're talking about, right? Because to be perfect here, we already know that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> but we should be seeking his holiness. As Jesus said, you should be trying to be perfect as your Father in heaven. So if we are doing this on a regular basis, then this is hitting away in our heart and into our subconscious. Where when you get ready to run that yellow light, Robert, guess what? <laughs> you put the brakes on. You know you shouldn't. He will say, "Do." Oh, stop! Stop! Okay. <laughs> There's another question right beneath that one. In what ways can believers demonstrate their trust in God when making choices in life? I thought we just covered a little bit of that, right? Well, I said see God in prayer and meditate. Mm -hmm. uh, see the situation from God's perspective. Be reminded of what God said in the situation. And then be still and know that he is God. Do what the Holy Spirit prompts you to do, although it doesn't make sense. <laughs> and um, these people, and even us today, Scripture says worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. The way you know the truth is the Bible that he left with us. Mm -hmm. The spirit, to connect with his spirit, you have to sit still, <laughs> meditate with him, and hear his Amen. voice. Oftentimes what we don't do, we don't do that. Amen. We quickly, because we are operating out of the flesh, mm -hmm. which we are always warned with. Right. And so I think for me, uh, that's why I was able to write this down, and like everyone else, no, I don't do this all the time. But as you, God allows you, gives you another day, another experience, mm -hmm. because that's where his teaching is, right. in the experience. Yes. And just as you've already said, it's the evidence. So yes. you think back. Oh, I remember when. That's right. Okay, how did that turn out? Okay. So okay. even though they're living in this depraved condition and they're looking at her, yeah, I hate self. I probably would have been one of the ones going back to <laughs> Uh, but the way to the Lord, the road is narrow. The way of destruction is broad. So, yeah, they're looking at all this stuff. No, I'm going back. Right. In addition to that, 
Mm -hmm. I said, look where he brought me from. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. And then I, uh, uh, I also do sometimes start counting my blessings. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 But you know, just like I said, if if you haven't hidden anything away in your heart, if you haven't had any experiences, right. and, and this this is your first rodeo with God, guess what? Sure, you're going to be filthy. You're going to be very, very filthy. But there's sometimes I think that you get to the end of the song where you know uh, God might have responded as to the prayer and the Lord is you hear enough. church of their God. Did it? No. Okay. The God of our church. Not 
the church of their God. You get it? Okay, so, so here's the deal. Sometimes you've got uh, our parishioners that when the pastor moves, they move. Uh, okay. Yes. God's everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. Huh? So what that says is we're serving God's word. What God says is not the church. We are participating in the church. And we are serving one another, but that's a part of God's work. But every time a pastor moves, oh, I've got to go with so and so and so. Oh, I've got to go You're talking about moving to another place. A church or what? So we're not serving the church, we're serving God. Okay. Okay. Uh, because when you look to scripture mm-hmm. and you find remnant, especially in the story of Elijah, right. where after he gets there, the cry of the Lord. Right. Right? Right. So and he was crying and doing right. right and all stuff. Right. And God said, Hey, what do you think you are the only person? Like you rightly said, seven thousand. But so I look at the red hand as God telling you that no matter what is going on. His work that is that he is still in chat. That's right. And he has people I call them a thought. Yes. No, it will in the future. That's right. Yeah, those that will always do what God wants right. to be done. Amen. See, Amen. He to do that. He only does it by reference. That's right. He has some people how they walk always got to be. I don't know why. They are like untouchable. Yeah. Yeah, the one that carries us is divine. That's right. And what that one is happening to. The one that what we are doing, we are reaching a lot of people. That's right. But God has a way to reach everybody. For everybody. That's right. That's right. That's right. So we're going to forget that we say, oh, who is going to grow to? I think we should go to grow here. Hey, God knows how to reach you. God knows. You know, so we missionaries and everybody, they can try. That's great. It's a great thing to call it. So God has people who would be food. Right? So that is my own understanding yeah. of them. Because, because God works through us. Right? Through us. Yeah. So he can do whatever he wants to. He's working through each and every person. Not only what he wants, but whatever he does. He does. He does. Uh, we're going to go to option two real quick. Uh, can I get you to read that example? Option two. But if you say we will not stay in this land in order to disobey the Lord your God, and if you say no, instead we'll go to the land of Egypt where we will not see war or hear the sound of the ram's horn or hunger for food, and we will live there, then hear the word of the Lord, remnant of Judah. This is what the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, says. If you are firmly resolved to go and stay there for a while, then the sword you fear will overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and the famine you are worried about will follow on your heels there to Egypt, and you will die there. All who resolve to go to Egypt to stay there for a while will die by the sword, famine, and plague. They will have no survivor or fugitive from the disaster I will bring on them. For this is what the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, says. Just as my anger and fury were poured out on Jerusalem's residents, so will my fury pour out on you if you go to Egypt. You will become you will become an example for cursing, scorn, execration, and disgrace. And you will never see this place again. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading. Can I get somebody to read uh warrant at the bottom of one oh six? 
Good morning. You want me to read it? Yes, go ahead. Okay. The Lord has spoken concerning you, remnant of Judah. Don't go to Egypt. Know for certain that I have warned you today. You have gone astray at the cost of your lives, because you are the one who sent me to the Lord your God, saying, Pray to the Lord your God on our behalf. And as for all that the Lord our God says, tell it to us and we'll act accordingly. For I told you today, but you have not obeyed the Lord your God in everything he has sent me to tell you. And now, therefore, know for certain that by sword, famine, and plague, you will die in the place where you desire to go to stay for a while. May God add a blessing to the reading of the <laughs> Now, we, we see the, the, blatant, the blatant disobedience here, right? Blatant. Let's go back to the two questions. We got a minute or two. It's, it's 10 now. We take a minute or two. Um, it says here, no, we got those two questions. Yes, we did. Okay, so the question right above one, why might a person choose to run away from what God, from what God has commanded? I, I think we talked about that already, did we not? Uh, the third bullet 
his failing to follow God's counsel reveals a person's true heart. And that's what we were talking about, about belief and trust. Okay? That true heart. Oh, yeah, I love God. I believe in everything you say. And then when time comes to, to apply, well, I'm good. <laughs> I do it my way. <laughs> I do it my way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you want to set this up? Let us pray. Oh, Sovereign Lord, we thank you for the new mercies you give us each morning because of your faithfulness to us. Forgive us, we pray, when we fail to seek you first when making decisions and lead and, and lean to our own understanding. Mm -hmm. Because of your unfailing love and patience, you permit us to learn from the consequences because of our own doing. Mm -hmm. We pray for wisdom to discern when we should not delay, but hasten to keep your commandments, and when we need to be still and know that you are God. Mm -hmm. We ask, O oh God, that you temper our hearts, minds, and spirits, prepare us to receive the message so that we will know how to walk more closer with you. We thank you for everyone who was able to attend both online and in person. Be with us throughout the day. This is our prayer. We pray and we pray it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you all for coming.